So thanks once again for dropping by the channel. If you like the content, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe, share the video if you enjoyed it, if you felt it was useful. Now let's get into this. So I'm just gonna read, just gonna start off on my Coppage Twitter page here. I'm gonna read verbatim what he has tweeted out about the Canelo Alvarez situation. Because as we know now, Canelo Alvarez has now filed a lawsuit against the zone. He's filed it against his own Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy. I'm going to read this now here. So it says he's seeking a judgment that allows him to break free of his contract, or from those contracts, I should say, and become a free agent, as well as 280 million plus damages. I'm assuming he wants that in compensation. Quoting Canelo Alvarez here, he says, I'm pound for pound number one in the world. I'm not scared of any opponent in the ring, and I'm not going to let the failures of my broadcasters or promoters keep me out of the ring. I filed the lawsuit so I can get back to boxing and give my fans the show they deserve. Right, so this is basically what is being quoted from Canelo. It's being said from Team Alvarez. Lawsuit being filed against Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Specifically, the zone is the one I'm looking at there. Now, they had like pages of the actual lawsuit. I only just read through it briefly and you know, they were saying things like other than Rocky Field and which was the first opponent that Canelo fought under this contract Alvarez and Golden Boy were the ones who picked the fights essentially the zone didn't I'm, I'm sure the zone had a say in it and they'd say look we, we preference this fight but essentially what I was getting from reading that was that it's Alvarez and Golden Boy who made the decision now obviously Canelo was set to well the rumors were and the hearsay was that he was set to return to the ring this Saturday if, you know, if things had been different. And it would have been probably against somebody lesser, you know. Uh, back in the summer we were talking about, you know, guys like the Revichenko before he was announced to fight Charlo. We were talking about, like, real obscure guys like Jay Quigley and stuff like that. But just because they were cheap. Simple as, just because they were cheap. Canelo had even stated that he was willing to take a pay cut and fight behind closed doors. He just wanted to get back in the ring. But... The zone, when you look at the zone, like, the zone were saying, oh, we're not happy with this, or we don't want this, and, you know, think of it like this, right, they were talking about Canelo out in December against maybe a Billy Joe or a Callum Smith, and the zone were saying, that's not credible, and you're looking at that, you're thinking, how is that not credible, you're, you're talking about two world champions in said weight division as Canelo Alvarez, yes, put that fight on, what's wrong with that, but I think we look at this from... We look at this from our point of view, being used to pay-per-views, being used to just the way boxing has been, you know, run on TV for you know, decades. You know, when we had HBO, they would put, you know, their boxing after dark on. They would have their standard HBO, and they obviously have their pay-per-view. All right, and um, you know, with Sky and BT Sports, something similar. They have their subscription base to pay for the Sky Sports package. You get your boxing, your fight nights, and you get your pay-per-view. So we're used to that. So we're used to seeing. You know, fights get made, get put on pay-per-view. Even if they're not necessarily pay-per-view worthy, we see them get put on pay-per-view. With The Zone, it's not pay-per-view. All right? It's a subscription platform. All right? So, the heads of The Zone, they're looking at Alvarez and thinking, right, we need to drive subscriptions. Fights against Billy Joe Saunders. Is that going to drive subscriptions up in the US? Not really. And that's where they're really aiming their market at. But it looks at things, especially with Alvarez, is the US market. You look at that, you're thinking, will that drive subscriptions in the US? Not really. But would a trilogy with Triple G drive subscriptions up, considering the two fights they had, which are pay-per-view prior to that, done over a million buys? I'm sure the zone are looking at that thinking, well, they've been adamant that they want the Triple G trilogy fight. So they're looking at that thinking, yep, yeah, that's the fight we want. We want a Triple G fight. The zone, in terms of driving subscriptions, look at some of the things they've done. Look at some of the things they put on, I should say. You know, they put on KSI Logan Paul. All right, I know you could say, well, that was Eddie Hearn. The Zone are happy to promote that, and they're happy to, you know, give it the green light as well. It's not just Eddie Hearn. They're happy to go along with that. They've also put on Demetrius Andre's undercard at the start of this year. I forget the guy's name. Something Paul. might have been, it wasn't Logan Paul, but it was some other guy. They put that on. So they're putting on YouTubers fighting to drive subscriptions up. If Canelo Alvarez came out tomorrow and said, I'm thinking of fighting Conor McGregor on the zone, they'd probably jump at, this, they'd jump at that. But fighting the Billy Joe or Callum Smith, because it's not going to drive subscriptions up that much, at least not in the States, 
that's one of the reasons why I think the zone are being like this with Alvarez. Because they're looking at Alvarez and they're thinking, biggest name in world boxing. Yes, he can drive subscriptions up just being there. But if we have the right dance partner, if we have someone that is known, like really known and is, has a history with Canelo, or is just a massive name in another sport, then that's all. That's fine by us. But you fighting someone good who's not really well known in the US, well, we don't want that. Essentially, that's the kind of vibe you get from the zone. That it's like, you, you look at Billy Joe and you look at Callum Smith and you think, yeah, they are credible opponents. They're good opponents for Canelo. The zone are probably looking at that thinking, yeah, they might be good opponents in terms of boxing, but they're not going to drive subscriptions up, are they? We'll, uh, we'll look elsewhere. I think that's kind of something what's going on. Alvarez at this stage now is 30 years old, I think. 29 or 30. Biggest star in world boxing. I really don't know why he doesn't. he's just not started doing things on his own. You know, like Floyd. You know, just going, deciding, you know what, promoters, all this. Why don't I just go independent and do something similar to what Manny Pacquiao does? So Manny Pacquiao has his own, like, Manny Pacquiao promotions, which pretty much he only uses when he fights. But he, I remember he done a Pacquiao promotion show with Bob Arum. And I think, I don't think this was technically a Bob Arum card when he fought Matisse. He was able to put that on. Put that Manny Pacquiao promotion show on and then have, um, you know, obviously Bob Arum and ESPN do the coverage of it. Something, something similar to that anyway. So that's something that I think Canelo Alvarez may end up going down and doing. Um, Golden Boy, really, when you look at the roster of fighters, they've got some good upcoming fighters. But really, truly, when you look at it in a nutshell, Alvarez is feeding Oscar and Golden Boy. He really is. So I'm sure they're trying to, I'm sure they don't want to let Alvarez go at all even if he does take legal action so you know it's an interesting one it's an interesting development I, again I, I said it once i say it again I don't think the heads of the zone they're looking at they're looking at Alvarez's career they're looking at other fighters career from a subscription business point of view they're not looking at it in terms of okay we're putting on the best fights for Canelo no they're thinking what are the fights that would generate the most subscriptions regardless of said competition if you know what I mean because the, I'm sure the zone if Canelo came to them tomorrow and said, right, forget all this lawsuit. I have two opponents. One is Billy Joe Saunders. The other is Jorge Masvidal. You know what the zone would say. They'd be like, get me this, get me Masvidal. Get Masvidal on there. Drive subscriptions. Billy Joe, a, a legit boxer. Yeah, but will he drive subscriptions up? Mm, I doubt that. That's kind of how I think they're looking at it. Just, to, just from the outside looking in, that's what it looks like to me. Because... As far back as last year, even when Canelo Alvarez was looking to fight Kovalev, the zone were really coming there and be like, no, we want the Trilogy Triple G fight. We want the Trilogy Triple G fight, but Alvarez wanted the Kovalev fight. So even as far back as last year, we've seen kind of a bit of disarray with Alvarez and the zone. So I'm going to leave it up here. I'm going to leave this video here. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think it's like what I'm thinking? And the tension from Alvarez and the zone is because the zone are really all about subscriptions and Alvarez just wants to get good fights. Just wants to be in big fights. Doesn't matter who. Be in big fights. You know, never mind the subscriptions. Never mind, you know, who drives up subscriptions for what. Do you think it's something like that? Let me know your thoughts down below. Hope, as always, people, you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, please smash that like button. It helps me out so much you just don't know. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. As always, peeps, I'll talk to you.